like why they want to be in it. Um, so cool. So we are recording. And I'll grab my okay. Screen. All right. So, um, why don't we just start by having you play something, whatever notes you want to play, and then we can kind of diagnose. <coughs> yeah. Uh, no, I am playing of previous. Uh, you uh, tell me. Uh, G note. Yeah, that's totally that's yeah. G. Yeah. G F. Uh, uh, can I uh, uh, tell you uh, separate notes, or I uh, can play uh, the complete notes at uh, once time? Um, whichever way you want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm playing. Uh, in uh, same time, uh, all nodes. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that was awesome. Uh, all your right hand yeah. notes came out perfectly. Uh, there is sometimes problem uh, my uh, first finger touch with uh, this knob mostly most probably is touch when I am uh, pressing F node the finger uh, press also uh, this node I don't know what is node mm -hmm. uh, you can see yeah um, then uh, when I am pressing this it's slightly uh, depressed uh, this node uh, you can see uh, yes. okay this and this mm -hmm. that's why uh, sometimes uh, the uh, abnormal noise you can uh, uh, you can tell this abnormal noise create right. this is issue uh, this is the uh, most issue i am facing okay well, and you're not the only one. A lot of people hit the side keys. Um, sorry. Oh. One second. <clears throat> sorry, the sun was coming right in my eyes. Um, oh. So, it's your um, morning. Yeah, it's morning here. It's so. Oh. Uh, and it's I'm in I'm in one of the hottest parts of Arizona. So when the sun rises, it's just really hot right away. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hopefully that'll go away now. Um, so, so the side <coughs> keys, right? Um, these are all keys you'll use later, but for now, okay. yes, they'll definitely get in the way. So, um, how we're gonna fix that? There's a couple ways that I like to think about hit, not hitting, um, specifically this this one, the one that you're having trouble with. Yeah. Um, so I think that is happening because your overall hand is very compressed. So if you notice, when I'm when I'm playing like I normally do, there's a lot of space between my hand and the instrument, um, kind of enough for like a tube. Um, okay. You know, um, some like a larger amount of space, and if we kind of if we compress our hand too much, then it kind of crash you know crushes in on the instrument. So I think the first thing for you is going to be, let's work on um, keeping the hand relaxed, but curving it and opening it up a little more. So um, oh, I think uh, I have to uh, bend some more uh, fingers yeah. like this. Now that the I'm, danger is if you bend too much, then it'll yeah. not seal. So there's sort of a, a sweet spot oh. you need to find that's going to allow you to cover the notes, but have a little more curve. Okay. So I'm kind of, my hand is about here. I think of it just like a, a little space, enough space that okay. you're not touching the key, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, okay. And then, um, I would, you know, and then that also is just a thing that comes with time. The more you play, the more you, you know, learn. Um, and your fingers get used to not, you know, hitting the side things. 
Um, you know, it's, it's one of yeah. the more common things that you maybe encounter starting out. So, um, yeah, that's, but that's, it happens sometimes, uh, not uh, every time. Yeah. Uh, it happens some sometimes. Yeah. And when it happens, does it usually happen after you've been playing, uh, you know, uh, other notes, or is it usually right away? Uh, uh, just only uh, when I am playing F node on okay. the time of uh, pressing of F node. Yeah. Not any other node. Yeah, I think that's happening is you're just your hand is compressing a little bit and it should i mean and it kind of needs to stay a little more full so that's just something you can watch for and even when you're playing you can look down at your hand and see that your hand is far away you know um a habit that you don't want to build however would be to always have your hand out because eventually you're going to yeah. need to keep your fingers close. And it's it's a very common habit that people make. Um, but for now, you know, just think about always looking to see is there space, you know, when you're playing F or if you're playing E, is there, you know, is it even remotely <clears throat> touching or is it far enough away that you'll, you know, be able to play without hitting it? So that, that might just, yeah. yeah, and that'll, you know, you'll get a feel for that too, the more you play and the more comfortable your hand gets. I will say it'll, it might take a couple months before physiologically your body is very used to playing the clarinet because, you know, it's, it's something unnatural in the sense that it's not, you know, something innate and it's not something we do all the time unless we're holding a clarinet, you know, we don't move our fingers like this. So it'll just take a little time for your hand to build that muscle memory of what it's supposed to um, feel like. Uh, yeah, uh, but I can uh, I can try to improve it uh, with short of time. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that, with my practices. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think just as you are. Um, as you're playing, just being really monitoring your your left your hand um, and that finger to see, you know, is that key. Um, if you really notice it happening a lot, you could also take a little piece of tape or um, something that's you know that something sticky but wouldn't stick forever. So like a post-it note. Um, or a little roll of tape or something, and then you could just put it there or something to sort of feel it, um, and then you would know, you know, you'd just have another visual to not see it um, or to not hit okay. it. But um, I, th I do think some of that also will just go away the more that you practice. Um, and then, yeah, uh, but as you play, I, just I have, aware. yeah. So, and uh, the other problem is, uh, I like, this problem is the bigger of the balance of whole uh, clarinet mm -hmm. on your thumb. Okay. Because if it, uh, clarinet is not balanced at your hand, uh, it will vibrate uh, during playing which is the uh, my major problem I have noticed. Okay. Uh, balance, uh, like uh, in this position. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a great... Uh, uh, it's jerking like uh, up and down, uh, left, yeah, up and forward, backward and forward. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely good to know. That is it a problem? Um, it's, well, first of all, just, you know, physically speaking, the instrument does not balance at the middle because, um, you know, there's heavier weight on the bottom. Um, so it'll always, it'll never be fully balanced from just holding it. So we yeah. have to counterbalance with our face to get it to feel even. Um, so... Uh, so you were saying it's a problem with your tongue and keeping that, uh, with your tongue for the balance or was it, 
uh, is our teeth are uh, is our teeth are involved in the balance of cladnet is teeth uh, played the role uh, for balancing it um, upper teeth yeah upper teeth are upper teeth yeah so so the upper teeth are really important uh yes so what what we what we need to be doing to make the instrument balance when we play is um we need to be pushing up with our right hand the one that's supporting the instrument um we need to be pushing okay. the instrument up against our top teeth and okay. then holding with our face upward and slightly uh, upward and slightly uh, forward yes like upward that. yeah and then slightly slightly out right so your jaw is just yeah. a little out and then and then that way the bottom lip is able to sort of cradle and support the mouthpiece as well okay and and then a good way to check for that is when you have it on your face and you've got it all set to um, hold it with the hold everything and then take your left hand and wiggle the barrel a little and see if it'll move. So if it looks like this, yeah, you know that's moving a lot. So something isn't firm. But then if you know, like I, I was wiggling it a lot, but you can't move it. Um, because everything was very firm, and you really are pushing up quite a bit with your right hand into your face. It's not just uh, okay. it's not just you know holding it to hold it. It does have to also push a little. So you you should feel a little pull, like a little, you know, in your whole right arm. It should feel kind of engaged, like you are holding it up. Okay. Um. So that those hopefully will um that that might help as well. But yeah, as far as, as it feeling balanced when you play, it always will feel heavier in the right hand. The left hand, oh, yeah. the, the, top half is, it the is. top half is just always going to be lighter. Um, so then it's just using the face and stuff to balance it out. Yeah, I will try these techniques in, uh, in my practice. Great. Um, yeah. Well, what do you want to work on today? How do you feel about your, um, like the right hand notes? I know we started on them last week. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, so the the hands when when we added down our our right hand are those notes. The, I know you were having yeah. some trouble with them last week, but it um, are they coming out better this time? Yeah, they are. They are coming. Great. Uh, yeah. Let's see, how about, let's play from G, from open G. Um, let's oh, just add okay. one finger down, all the way um, down to other to the lower G. Wow, okay, this is awesome. Um, a lot of Okay. Yeah, wow. Um, this is so cool. In one week, you have gotten um, your right hand to really feel. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I remember last week you were having trouble with the right ring finger, which is the most common yeah, it thing is. to have problems with. And um, it looks like they're really coming through this week. So um, awesome. I'm so, wow. Okay, great. Well, uh, Looks like we're gonna learn some more notes today because it looks like you've really got yeah. those under your. Yeah. Uh, one major thing, uh, sorry. Uh, one major thing I have figured out from last week, uh, it is uh, the issue of read. Okay. If if read is not uh, okay and chipped off, then uh, no voice uh, was coming. You know, last week we have a problem. Uh, the uh, so many times I have tried, no voice is coming. Mm -hmm. So the uh, last week the problem was uh, read is was the chipped off, oh, and wow. uh, some so yeah this is a problem. Wow, 
Um, well, yeah, so it's it's amazing how the tiniest chip and the reed can make yeah. the whole instrument not work. I think um, it's the big, bigger, bigger uh, part of the whole clarinet. Yeah, if absolutely. It, it is not right, the whole clarinet is not uh, perfect. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and that's, I know, I know you're interested in eventually trying to do clarinet repair. Um, and that's, that is one thing I've seen a lot myself as a repair person um, or with my friends that do repairs that, you know, a good amount of the time a kid will come in with a broken clarinet and then we'll tell them to try a different read and it'll work just fine. So um, anytime you think it's the instrument, always check the read first because that's something that's replaceable and you yeah. know, easy to try some, you know, try a different one of. And then, you know, if it's still not working, then obviously something else is broken. But yeah, um, well, that changes a lot of things. Yeah, the reed chipping means that it can't vibrate in enough of a way to make sound happen. So um, I'm so, well, yeah, so uh, always really carefully be putting them away. And then, you know, sometimes chips will just happen. But that's yeah, why as course. much as possible we like to, you know, try to take care of them so they don't. Um, especially right now, my, my shipment of reeds with mail being the way it is, is delayed by something like a month. So, uh, oh. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of making do with what I have because I uh, don't really have any, any music stores I can go to right now. <laughs> but, uh, oh. yeah, so, so yeah, always being good to our reeds is sort of uh, going to be helpful for, for making sound always happen. Um, Wait, so, uh, you are playing with uh, the chip, chipped off reed? Um, the reed I'm playing is actually, this one's not a, it's a little oh, okay. old, it's, so it's kind of weakened, um, so I've had to do some work on it. Um, you can do things with sandpaper and repositioning um, that aren't, oh. you know, a permanent fix, but for the time being, that's kind of what I've been um, oh, is, is is that reeds are fixable? Um, yeah, so there are ways to fix the reeds. Sometimes okay. with tools. Um, I don't actually use any tools because I've always made, I've been fine with sandpaper and it's so much cheaper that I've never felt like uh, buying them. But the, the main things we do when we fix reeds is we make them uh, weaker or lighter to play. So we'll no. take sandpaper and we'll... I think, lighter. So, I think um, it was the uh, emery paper uh, we rub on it and uh, might be the tip of reed uh, is oh. in good position. Okay, yeah. I, th um, I think. Yeah, I, you know, that I will... So do you have some of that paper over there? Um, that you yeah, yeah. Because uh, in my field in engineering, I'm an automobile engineer. Emery paper is commonly used in uh, our workshop. Uh, it is not a, a big thing. It's a common thing which is used by every worker in our workshop. Okay, great. Well, yeah. um, I, you know, I will put a little video on the Google Drive with um, how to some some recommendations for working on the reeds with sandpaper um, yeah yeah of course yeah there's there's a oh, there's can... no one way to do it and i've met a lot of people um especially the clarinetists that i've worked with that are in europe and other countries or like south america um they oh, okay. will do things differently but um i will send you a video with a couple of the ways that i've worked on reeds and um and ways that you can work on them without damaging them um, or at least having oh. a lower chance so um, i will make that today or tomorrow and i'll put that in our google drive folder so you can reference that as well yeah yeah uh i will see and i will appreciate uh, you for this yeah, yeah no it's, thank it's you. um yeah. it's it's one of those things that's uh, really good to know how to do properly and if you you know because otherwise it's very easy to you know rip off a piece of the reed or um you know something else so i'll i'll put something together for that i've i've done a lot of studying on reeds so uh, i will try it <laughs> i will try it on my reeds because i have two to three reeds uh, which were chipped off oh, uh, you can see uh, oh, yeah, a little, 
Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, oh, okay. But yeah, perfect. Um, I have to try, uh, these videos on these and uh, reads. Yeah. Always good just to get used to the, uh, the method and then you can, you know, translate it. To all yeah. Of them. Yeah. Um, well, I think since you've gotten all your right hand notes, um, I okay. think we can learn some new notes today. Um, yeah, sure. I think I think you're you're ready to to go to those. So, um, we're gonna actually start using some of these keys up here. Um, okay. We're going so we're gonna learn what's called the throat tones. So um, there's different registers on the clarinet. The lowest register is called the Shalomo register, and what we're learning is part of that but it's also called the throat tones. So you'll you'll hear these notes referred to as both. Um, Sorry, uh, what are you saying? Uh, uh, shel shelma? Yeah, um, so yeah, the whole, everything we've learned so far is in what's called the Shalema range. Shalema. Um, yeah, and then there's other ranges that we'll get to uh, called the clarion and the altissimo, but those we'll get to probably in a couple weeks. Um, with the throat tones, they're a little um, unique because they're, they always will sound a little pale and they're always going to sound like a little airy. They're not the most beautiful notes on the instrument. Um, okay. So that's, I, that's kind of like my disclaimer to say, you know, if it sounds very airy um, or pale, that that's just how the notes come out. Um, so let's start. Um, going back to open G. Okay. So open G, right? No fingers. Uh, that is the first throat tone note. Uh, may I, I play? Of course, yes, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, now, using your index finger and kind of aiming for the side, sort of around here, um, kind of in between these knuckles, we are actually, you know that key that you don't want to hit when you're hitting, when you're playing F? We're actually going to want to hit that note now. Um, so we're pressing this key with the side of our finger, and that is the note G flat, or it also is, uh, or sorry, this is the note G sharp, um, or it can also be called A flat. So when we just play that and nothing else, it's um, that's the note G sharp. So if you want to try, uh, that's yeah. Um, and then aim with the the lower part of your finger, so more um, more around here. Yeah, right, right about there. And then think about your index finger being more up. So instead of being like this, it's more like this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, go ahead and try it. Perfect. So okay. the tricky part about the, these notes, the, the throat tones, is it's very tempting while you're playing them to let everything else fly away because you're not using them. But as much as possible, we're going to work on trying to keep, keep the rest of the fingers as close by as we can. And um, one advantage you have is your hands are fully grown, and they're also large, and so that should be less of a problem for you. Um, a lot of my students who are 10 and um, their hands are not you know, growing, done growing yet, they really can't do both because their hands are just very small. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a good advantage you kind of have. Um, yeah, I have. Challenges you probably won't encounter too much. Um, but just, to, you know, just try as you're playing them to not let everything else go. So your next note is this key up here. This is called, okay. um, this is the A key. Um, I think that's the official name for it too. We're playing the note A with this, so it's um, we just push this one down, um, and we're we're aiming with this part of the finger. 
So right on, oh. right kind of in that crook of our knuckles. So we're front edge of yeah, uh, right thing. Yeah, there because I'm I'm trying to keep my fingers curved so it's close okay. by to everything else. Um, and I'm kind I'm actually hitting right with the bone of my finger because that's a little bit more yeah. solid. So um, oh no, sorry, my reed's dried. Um. Oh. Okay. So that's the note A. If you want to try that, just that note. Perfect. Um, now, yeah. keep that A down, and then the key that's above the F key, we're going to add okay. that as well. So we're pinching the two for B flat. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. so for B flat, we only need these two. I call it the pinchers because we're kind of pinching the clarinet. Um, so let's go back to G and try playing all of them going up. So it'll sound like. <laughs> G sharp, A, B flat. G, G sharp, A, and B flat. Okay. Make sure you're hitting this key and not this key. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so just, um, just the long register key. There we go, yeah. on these is just make sure your hand tries try to keep it up a little and what I mean by that is when just now when I was looking at your hand playing it was like a little more um, your wrist was a little more down and everything was just a little kind of sloping downward um, so just try to keep the wrist up a little bit and then keep everything up a little a little bit more just I think that'll help you a lot in the long run that okay. Up. So, um, great. So those are the throat tones, uh, and that's. Let's see. I know I want us to learn a few more notes today, uh, but how do you feel about the okay. tones? Do you feel do you want to review them anymore? Or do you want to move on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we think we can. Uh, we should move on. Uh, I have uh, practiced uh, these three notes. I will uh, practice this soon. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and you um, and you can always reference this if you forget those fingerings. Um, so now let's learn. Um, okay, so we're gonna just take our left index finger, and we're gonna put it down. Um, another way to think of this is playing E but without the thumb. <laughs> um, just this finger down. That is the note F sharp. This? Uh, so, uh, index finger up on the first string, so scoot it up one. Oh, there okay. Go. Yeah, so think about playing the note E, but just without the thumb. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Good, yeah, perfect. So, um, yeah, so that's the note F sharp. And um, we can get more into notes and what that means as we continue. But um, 
that is that is one of the many notes. So a sharp makes the note higher, but by a smaller amount than a whole note would. Um, so so to start, uh, we'll just kind of learn these notes, and we'll get into more of that as as we go. Um, Let's see, we can actually, oh, one more note. Let's do one more note, um, and then we can play a scale. Um, okay. So if we play um, with all of our left hand down, and then we put just our right middle finger down, so our ring and our index finger are not down, we get the note B natural. There you go, yeah. Oh. So, um, because we we had learned B flat, B natural is just a little bit higher than that. So, um, now we can actually we've learned all the notes to play a G major scale. Uh, and scales okay. are one of the most important things we can play. Um, and so we're gonna learn our first one today. Um. So let's start on, we're going to go from G, so all fingers down with G, and then we're going to do A, and then okay. that E note, B natural, C, okay. T, E, and then that other new note, F sharp, just the index finger, and then G open. So it sounds like this. try that from the low G. Yeah, um, so at the end, that was all really The last right. one, last yeah. one is not, uh, okay, last one not is uh, uh, B sharp. Um, so your, your last two notes is F sharp, just the index finger, and then G. Oh. Your uh, hand, sorry. Your, your hands are not showing during okay. playing. Yeah, let's see if I may be more. Oh, oh okay. So just, um, just the index finger for the second to last note, and then nothing for the last note. I missed it. Yeah, we'll go back uh, to the beginning and we'll go um, in smaller sections. How about? Um, so let's start with G and let's just do um, G, A, B, C. One more time. Uh, G. Um, so G, one more finger. A. Uh, go, so go back to G, make sure all three fingers are down. There we go. So G. Okay, G. And then A. A. And then B. B. And then C. Then C, okay. Let's just do those first four notes to start. Oh. Perfect. Okay, so now we left off on C, right? So let's go C, D, E, and then F sharp. For F sharp, we're only picking up our thumb. So C, F sharp, uh, F sharp only, uh, only is uh, not in G. Uh, yeah, F sharp is is you're only pressing one thing down with your right left index finger right up there. Everything okay. else is not pushed down. Oh, and okay. Then, um, G. So let's go from C now. Um, C, D, E, F sharp. And then G. Okay. That last note you played, you played F, right? 
instead of playing the um, just do the endings so you can step in. <laughs> Um, so for this scale, we're actually never going to play F. We're only going to play F sharp. So we never need this. F sharp. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so you know, you know how as you were going up, you're removing one finger at a time. Um, you're removing these fingers. When you get to E, the next finger you're going to remove is the thumb. So the index finger. Okay. Good, and then the last note is just open G, take everything with you. Okay, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, no, I think you got it, yeah. Perfect. Um, oh, okay. So that was an ascending G major scale, your first scale. Um, oh, yeah, so thank you. Awesome. So in all, all Western music, pretty much everything we play is built on scales. Um, anything that is known as tonal is built on scales. So they're really important to know. And so we're going to learn more of them the more and more you learn notes. Um, but yeah. that was that's the first one we did. Uh, so no, that was an ascending scale going up. So we're going to do a descending scale now, coming back okay. down. So um, you just stopped on the note open G. We're just <clears> going <throat> to go back down the way we came up. So, okay. Um, so it sounds like, uh, let's see if I can show this a little better. Okay. Yeah, just three, three singer. Yeah, um, so for that last bit, don't forget we're doing B natural. So um, coming down from C, we're doing these notes. Okay. Do you want to try it again from the top G? Yeah. Um, now, can you go from the low one, the, so what we first did, the ascending scale, and then come back down? So the whole thing, um, starting on the low, going up to the higher one and then back to the lower one um, and it kind of is so it sounds like this <laughs> Yeah. That was your first um, full scale. Awesome. Um, 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's that's um, that's really great. I I'm excited that we've learned enough nodes that on this is our our third week or our fourth week, and we're we're already getting to scale. Yeah. So, um, it's our third third meeting. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Okay, that's yeah. man, that's great. Well, awesome. I think we can actually learn a couple more notes and possibly another scale. Um, how do you feel about everything we just did? Do you need to review any of that or do you feel ready to move on? Um, as you wish, uh, what, what is your judgment um, in my well, progress? I, I think you've, you've gotten them all, got all the notes and you, um, you understand how to, to execute them. But if you wanted to go back and review anything, um, we most definitely can before we move on to to another note. Okay, I think uh, we should uh, cover uh, two more notes. Okay, great. Okay. Great. Okay, so so we have we're at um, we're gonna start working with the four keys here. Um, okay. And so. And oh yeah, these are these guys. There's a lot we can do with them, um, but to start, we're not gonna, you know, learn all of them. But um, everything in the clarinet is really connected, and there's a lot of stuff being that are connected through these. But um, we will play these keys with our pinky, and okay. so um, so from the note G, which we did for that scale, the last note of it. If we have all fingers down, we're going to put down this um, key as well with our pinky. So it's of the four, it's um, that one on the set. Um, so one more down from that, and then one more over. So we're on this one. Um, so go over one more, and uh, one more down. And then one more down. That one, yeah. Um, okay. I, you know, I'm thinking of this, if I think of this like a quadrant, quadrant one, two, three, four, we're in the fourth quadrant. Okay. Um, but that's from the math brain that I've not used in five years. So, <laughs> but, um, okay. yeah, I didn't really need any more math when I majored in music, but... <laughs> Uh, but it all comes back anyways, you know, this entire thing is basically math, but, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna use this, um, key here with everything else down, and that is the note F, um, and okay. it's a low note, and it sounds like this. Um, so if you want to try having everything down, and then that pinky in the lowest quadrant, um so let's is it um oh so it's the other one actually uh this is uh, uh or low? that one yeah the so the absolute oh, lowest okay. one yeah that's the one okay lowest okay. yeah go ahead and try that <laughs> You know, how about this? Let's do, let's go from G, so um, G with everything down, and then let's add that pinky down. There you go, yeah. Kind of the feel. Great, so that's the note F. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's other ways to play it. But for right now, that's the only one we're going to worry about. So with F, um, yeah, we've actually we've actually learned all the notes now to play an F major scale. So I think, why not? Let's try that one, too. Um, so the, the F major scale uses a couple different notes than the G major scale that we just played. So we're going to walk through it. So let's start on um, the new note we learned on F. And okay. then we're going to go to G, to A, 
and then to B flat. So we're just going to pick up one finger at a time. Let's just okay. do that much. It sounds like this. <laughs> I think read is dry. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe um, maybe you try to re-wet your read. How about we'll go down to it because it's a little easier to go to the note than it is. Oh, there we go. If it doesn't come out, that's a great way to, to do it, to start on a higher note and then come down to it because uh, you're more familiar yeah. with those, and then, and then it'll just work out. So from C, um, where we just left off, we're going to do C, D, E, and then F. So this time, we're going to use the thumb F and not F sharp. Okay. So it'll sound like... try to put more of it together. So we'll start on F, which is that new note here. Okay. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and then F. And then we okay. go back down. Um, do you want to try playing that? And I'll hold up my, my instrument as you go. Trace your steps and go back down to the bottom again. So F, E, C, C, B flat, A, G, and F. <laughs> Those are um, typically the, some of the first two we learn. Um, so um, this week, definitely um, practicing those scales will be really good to get more familiar with the, the notes on the lower half. And then as you play them, you can also focus then on is the face staying firm and, you know, is everything you know, uh, you know, like, is everything holding it in balance, like you said? Yeah. So, um, I would say practice those, those scales, and then next week we'll maybe try to start crossing the break, and, um, okay. the best way to practice for that is just to be very comfortable playing the notes that, like, F. 
so <coughs> you can, um, you know, if it not only coming down to it, but if you can just start cold on the F, that'll be a good thing to practice on this week. And um, if it doesn't come out, it might be because something is leaking. One of the fingers might not be on the holes properly. So you can, <coughs> okay. you know, you can yeah. keep a look for that as you, um, as you play as well. <coughs> Um, but do you, did you have any questions on either of the scales or the things that we just worked on? No, uh, but I think the F uh, node is, uh, which I uh, felt F node is uh, like something heavy or n need a more pressure or a more air or uh, might be there is a issue, there is leaking air from any node or uh, any hole. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I, I have to figure it uh, in the front of mirror. Uh, I'm watching during playing myself. Great, yeah, practicing yeah. in front of a mirror is really helpful. Um, and, I, and it will take a little bit more air for this bottom note um, because we're essential, you know, when we play, air is passing through the instrument, including through these holes. So when we play a note like yeah. F, we're blocking off all of the escape air passages except for the bell. <clears throat> so it will take just a little bit more air to push through because, um, because there's not enough, you know, as much other spaces for it to escape from. Um, okay. So yeah, that is something to be aware of. You might need a little bit more air. The pressure, it all doesn't change too much. So just make sure it's always firm. And then that will okay. hopefully kind of, it shouldn't need a lot more work, but have a little more air. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I have uh, just about a minute or two left before I have to head off to um, class. But um, yeah, do you have any last-minute so. questions or any last closing questions? Uh, only one. Uh, tell me the name of uh, those complete uh, scale uh, which uh, we learned today. Sure. And the first scale and second scale, is it their proper name or is there any other name? Uh, yeah, so the first scale we did is the G major scale. G major scale, okay. Major scale, yeah. uh, ascending in ascending and descending order, both uh, are G major. Yeah. So we learned what we learned was ascending and then descending. Okay. When in you know typically when we refer to a scale, we are referring to the whole thing, so combining both, and we don't usually have to specify you know ascending and descending. We'll usually just say the scale, and that's sort of implied. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of uh, you have uh, you you have to say it only G uh, major scale. Sure. So here's the G major scale. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. F sharp. G. Okay. F sharp. E. D. C. B. A and G. Okay, great. Yeah. And then um, the second scale we I got it. is the F major scale. Um, F major scale. And so okay. I'll walk through those notes again in that cycle just so you see them one more time. Um, so with F, we go F. Okay, okay. G, A, B a, flat. B flat. C, D, F, F, E, E, D, D, C, E flat, A, G, F. Okay. So um, That's hopefully it. if you yeah. can look back on the video for those, yeah, um, you'll you'll be able to um, piece anything together. Um, so those are those are the ones we learned, and then we also learned up here just one more time for you to remember the throat tones. So we have um, open G, which was no fingers, and then uh, these are pro throat tones. 
pro yeah so we uh, only have what will yeah just there's only four notes what are you saying pro protons yeah um the okay. throat tones are in the throat of the instrument that's why Thro called throat throat Throat, oh, yeah, uh, I mean yeah. throat. Oh, oh, yeah. That is <laughs> I understand true. pro, pro, oh, proton. Pro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. guess that wasn't picking up the t. Um, yeah. Throat okay. tones. Throat, throat tones. They're in the okay. throat of the instrument. Um, so we start. We have G, which is no fingers. Oh, and then okay. we have G sharp, which is just this key, and we play it with more of the side of our finger. And then we have A, which is just this key, and we try to play with that front knuckle of our finger, kind of curved. Okay. And then we keep that key down, and we add the long key here. This is the register yeah. key, and we try to hit that with the side of our thumb as well, and that's B flat. Okay. So, so G, R, A, and B flat. Um, so in case you, you know, need to reference those as, as well, you've got those now at the end of the video too. Um, yeah. but awesome. I well, did. you learned a bunch of new notes today. So, um, just practice through all the notes we've worked on and then also the ones that you've, uh, that you learned today and then those two okay. scales. And then next week we'll try learning some more notes. Um, and next week we'll start getting into some of the trickier notes because we've kind of reached that point, which is exciting. So um, yeah, it is. Yeah, well, it is so know, exciting. So just, yeah, just keep um, reinforcing all the stuff we've worked on so far, just practicing through them. And then um, I will post a thing in the Google Drive of um, sandpaper. Okay, okay, I will post that Great. later today or tomorrow. And, um, and then we'll check in next week and we'll um, I look at, and assuming everything is working out for for internet and um, this time and all that, then we will continue on next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we will. Excellent. Well, um, hope all the best for safety and health for your family and everyone <clears throat> around you. Yeah. Um, hope you're all hanging in there during this. Thank uh, you. During all of this, so. Actually, your uh, posted videos on Google Drive are very, very helpful for me uh, for practicing oh, uh, in uh, every day. And, and uh, sorry, I am uh, taking your time. I have only one question for you. If you don't mind uh, that. Thank you, Froze. Um, oh, technology. Oh, hello. I, sorry, you froze a, uh, for a few minutes. I think you're back. Yeah, I think you're back now. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. I have only one question, sure. if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And last meeting, uh, you tell me uh, that your family belongs to the India. Mm. Ah, then uh, I guess uh, you understand the Urdu uh, a little bit or the um, yeah, uh, something. Somewhat, yeah. Oh, then that's great. If uh, you can deliver it in Urdu, if you have easy, uh, then I, I think there is a easy uh, way to understand me uh, what you can say um, if it is easy for you yeah i'm unfortunately actually i i only speak english um oh, oh okay, okay. Tamil, actually but i never learned um, oh okay but, um yeah so the, i i, I <laughs> no english, no american no. sign language so um, <laughs> but uh <laughs> But I will, I will try then, to speak as slowly as I can, so you can capture the clarinet and you know all that information as best as you can. Okay, okay. Perfect. Great. Well, um, awesome job today, and yeah. um, and we'll come back next week. Yeah, sure. Excellent. Alrighty. Okay. Take care. 
um, all Take care. Have a great day. Thank you. Yes, you as well. Have a good okay. evening. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah. see you next week. In, right, oh, hopefully. Yeah, yes. sure. <laughs> I lo bye bye. I love you. Awesome. All righty. Goodbye. I love. Bye bye.